Is there anyone else in the waiting room? Um, uh, for... Dean, Dean's looking after the waiting room now, so anybody that needs to come in, will come in. Well, we're ready to go then. Uh, we have the pleasure, yeah. pleasure of Joe Carberry first to uh, uh, show his work. Right, Joe? Reveal all. Cheers, Brian. Is that, do we need a sign check, William, or are we okay no, you're to go? Good. You're good, bud. Good lad. So that's not my, oh, there's, there's me now. Okay. Just a few of the images. So, folks, um, thanks to the committee and the club for organizing this and um, for me getting the opportunity to, to speak about some of my images. I've taken a slightly different approach in that they're not necessarily all my favorites, but the images would have a bit of a story and how things came around or how I got to know somebody for a later shoot, whatever, things like that. Quick apology to Colin Ross and Laurie who asked me before to do a wee talk, so I suppose better late than never. Joe, I need to stop you just for one second. What? I need to stop you just one second. That's it, you're good Joe, sorry. Didn't everybody hear that first bit, yeah? Yeah, they did. Ah, happy test. So, um, Pop up the first slide for me, William, please. Okay, so I've put a wee bit of text on this and I've, it seemed sort of two images per slide, but there is a relevance to it. Um, these were the first stars that I received from NIPA as part of Catchlight. Um, the wee mushrooms there to the left can be found in abundance down in Crawfordsburn. It was way back in 2013 where me and a few colleagues, we actually did uh, A-level photography because that was my first route in to digital photography. Didn't really know about camera clubs at that stage and I felt that was the way to go. Um, I can tell you now, don't bother doing your A-level. Stick to the camera clubs. So it, it was more of like a nature shoot and uh, it, it was an easy enough shoot to take and I have to tell you, I mean, I did take multiple exposures for that just to be sure that I caught things and the light and stuff. But I don't know about numbers. I mean, there's, there's the odd numbers of uh, those be sort of guardians sitting below the mushrooms. I thought it sat well, um, out of focus towards the back, sh uh, small depth of field and a bit of a vignette around it. So it went into the club. I think it was uh, a nature round, if I remember rightly. And that received a star, the PDI. So the one to the right is my dear wife, Peggy. Um, many a time she's been asked to partake in a shoot. And this is over in London, Liverpool Street Station. We'd gone over to stay with cousins and taken a show, as you do. Love going to London. And I had this sort of thing planned. Um, and I wanted to take the shoot whereby the slow shutter speed, just asking our Peggy to, to stand still. And she thinks she was reading a map of the station, got over, but it did, I did promise her a decent lunch. I think she's done okay. So the movement around sort of makes the shot. Peggy was asked to stand still. And that went into an open round, I think. I think in, for the actual PDI that was entered, I think Ross suggested taking out a wee bit of text, you'll see just above Peggy's head. And he was probably right to do so. So what happened with that is, um, as you know, two starred images get you promoted from novice to advanced. But I didn't expect it to happen on a night in cat's light because um, I'd entered the novice round that evening. And as you know, the awards are given out at the start of the evening. And it was announced that two stars, Ross stood up and says, right, that's you promoted. So everything that I'd entered for the novice had to be rerouted into the advanced. So cheers for that. But so you know, I mean, it's done well for me. Next, please. Right, this looks like a bit of a book launch, bestsellers. Two places uh, I wanted to photograph, I'm sure most people know of the Duke there on the left, um, being covered by many people. I had planned to take it obviously at night, catch most of the lights. And I had the whole thing planned out. I went down a few days before New Year's. And obviously, if, if you look closely, you'll see all the red lights stretching across the alley. My luck, I popped in around midnight when the bar was shutting. And just as I set up the tripod, 
the lights. Um, let's see. Yep. The staff come out of the pub and turn the lights out. So it's sort of, it's, I was looking to, to, to actually capture all the red lights and stuff like that. So I was left with uh, picking up the lights coming up down the alley there. So it's for quite a high aperture, give you that starburst effect. It's not an image that would do well. Everybody's photographed it, so competitively, it wouldn't be one that it would enter per se. But Best Sellers was really referencing the fact that it would uh, sell pretty well, and it is one of the best sellers. As you may know, I sort of do the odd market, and sell some of my prints and landscapes and stuff like that. So it proves quite popular because everybody seems to like a picture of the Duke. Uh, so again, a bit of HDR just to try and catch all of the lights. And that square format tends to work quite, quite well. So that's still quite popular. Over to the right, I think a boat most people would know. Clara Namara, better known as, a uh, friend of the sea. I suppose most people know it better as Eddie's boat or Bad Eddie, Bad being Irish for boat. Um, it's one I'd scouted out, I checked up and was looking for potential landscapes around the coast of Ireland. Um, this is a boat that came adrift in Gwydor, one bag, and I think it was 1977. As I say, many people have taken this, but I think it turned out it's a long exposure. Uh, you're getting those lovely blues and greys and browns, and it's quite effective. You come right up against the boat and used a wide angle. Um, that's, that's proven real popular. Um, you bit of history that's ran aground in 1977. And I was checking back, I actually was in Guidor in 77, way back. The door is part of the Gale Tuck quarter up in uh, Donegal. So hopefully I wasn't involved in any of the reason for the boat run on the ground. But um, it's featured in a YouTube video, I believe. And it's also featured in Vogue magazine, but I've never been able to pick a picture of it. But yeah, one that I'm quite proud of. And it's done quite well. Next, please. Black and white. Um, I don't shoot a lot of black and white. And Certainly not intentional, but within the club, there's so many f beautiful black and white prints that come through. Some, it's a real art in itself. Um, and I suppose you don't always go out with the intention of shooting black and white. It's, you might find that a color image maybe suits the tones better. Um, the one at the top there is Dundrum, just outside Newcastle. And I've always wanted to photograph that sort of field with those lines you're dragging you up on to the horizon and the hay bales sitting. So it's almost, almost sits really well as, as in terms of composition, scale, odd numbers, taking you from large right through to the small, real moody sky. So I took quite a few images, um, but black and white just seemed to suit and that did appear in my L panel. And um, it's also pretty quite popular um, as as a print and particularly as a gift, I would maybe hand that one out and it's done quite well. So it's not a play on the word done, but Fort Dunry at the bottom, another black and white. And I think it, it went black and white simply because as most people can see, it's blown out in a few areas and it did, didn't sit well as a color at all. But Fort Dunry up beyond the Anishon Peninsula, uh, another place that scouted out. Now, I think the pier itself has changed quite a lot. They've modernized it. When I was scouting it, it was, I was looking at more of the older, older style, and I was looking for that to be part of the image. But, yep, they've built this new pier. So, again, long exposure. Uh, used the leading lines of the reel, you can see there. And there are a few fishermen there on the top. I was going to wait them out. I wasn't too sure whether to go ahead with the image, but I suppose at the end, it gives a sense of scale and perspective. Now it has been through the club, but it's had several issues. Um, from memory, I think as a print, uh, Ross pointed out that it had like a blue tinge. I don't think I've ever resolved that or gone back to it, but um, when you're maybe selling it as a print, it, it tends to do well because it's, it's got most of the elements. That rock formation looks fantastic. 
and it sits well as a black and white print. Okay, next one. God loves a try. This is more reference to me as opposed to the young model. Um, I think William refers to Sinead O'Connor. Um, but the young lady in the middle, I would run, well I did in the past run we beginners photography courses and one of the students I had been asking or looking for volunteers for people to model. She thought her daughter would suit. She definitely, there, there is something about her. She was 16 at that stage. Fantastic bone structure. Um, so people in the class, we were able to photograph her. We were setting up lights. Uh, I think I used a softbox. As you can see, it's more like a beauty shot. Um, a clamshell effect, so the light sitting above her head and then a reflector coming in below. You can see by the two lights in her eyes. Now, <clears throat> as, as models do, when the belts, they're not professional, they're going to come in, they'll have their own makeup on, no doubt. But I don't know if the other Joanne's with us tonight, Joanne McGuinness, as well as being a talented photographer, Joanne's very, very handy with the makeup. So she helped out. We're taking quite a few shots and I thought, Let's pull her back, see if we can get some futuristic. Her jumper's not gray, by the way. Um, I had to change the color of that because I just couldn't. The jumper's wrong, I don't know. It looks like a school uniform. But what I was trying to, to get through here is the one on the right, I think it was the Ice Queen or Snow Queen I put to it, didn't really work. I put it in recently to one of the uh, PDI competitions. I just couldn't get that effect with the, with the ice or, or the glass. Um, and I was creating that sort of shadow and getting her come. It, it just didn't work. I think there was a lot of issues around uh, sort of detail on, on the ice and stuff like that. But um, <clears throat> what maybe did work was the one on the left. And it looks like a cracked egg. I was actually quite proud of this because <clears throat> I was able to, known it to her and the jumper weren't really working. I was just cut off top and bottom and concentrate on the face. I did deliberately color the eyes. It was going blue and green. I think that was remarked on. I think it, I think it went into the fun competition recently. Um, and a cracked effect I was quite proud of too, because that's actually, from memory, I think it's actually the window cell outside of this room. So I know most folk could probably paint their cells by that stage, but before I decided to paint mine, I took a few photos and got that lovely effect. And quite a few YouTube videos, and it, it does explain quite well, I think. One of our presenters recently showed, I mean, the puppet wrap. And if you're able to manipulate it around the shape of the face, it does make it a wee bit more realistic. But it does, it just reminds me of a cracked egg at the moment. But um, certainly it just shows, you know, if you've got that image, you've banked it, and it can be used in several ways. Okay, next one, please. Uh, Hi, Jonathan. I was quite proud of this. I think uh, the image to the bottom right has done quite well. I'm fairly sure it was part of the FIAP panel, the one that we won, so something to be extremely proud of. So the story goes, you'll see in the top left, Jonathan's quite a handy basketball player. So what it was, was all these uh, young men and women came across <clears throat> from America as sports scholars, and they were tied in with, uh, it's, it's one of the Rory McElroy Foundation things, so they'd come across, coach basketball, play basketball, and, and maybe study. So they were based throughout the north. Um, Jordan, or Jonathan here, before you slip, Jonathan here was based in Jordanstown. So why was I there? So some of you may know I work for a local paper. Um, it's great. If you're ever thinking about how to utilize your camera and, and flies particularly, is maybe you know looking at some of the papers, newsletters, sports clubs even, are always looking for people to come in and sort of catalog things that are going on. So these scholars had arrived in one of the local basketball clubs and I went along to sort of cap, capture it all. Sat down against the wall behind the basket, wide angle, bounced a bit of the flesh off the wall and caught these guys throwing hoops. They were unreal. So after a wee conversation begun with Jonathan and he was looking for uh, a model portfolio, uh, but it was right up my street because I had planned to do the the shot at the bottom right there and he was going to fit the bill. So things went on and I met him up at Jordanstown, brought all my gear and I have a lot of gear. I think Raphael will te testify to that. 
and um, what did I do is um, I photographed them in Jordanstown and what backdrop did I bring? Black backdrop, couldn't believe it. I don't suspect Jonathan would have worked it out, I suppose he didn't really know but um, he, he was none the wise, wiser so I think it was three, um, all I had at that stage was umbrellas so they were left and right and I think going in, into the, the, the far right behind him as a sort of a kicker. Um, he is a good looking guy, great skin. Now, he would have played for that club, Jordanstown. Um, but the background, quite interesting, so you always be, you know, always have that camera ready. So I had gone out one night and taken a few background shots. It was in round the Titanic and then I cut back down towards Sydenham. And the bridge, I think it just opened. So the, it, it, was lit, it was lit up beautifully. And again, a bit of a long exposure, you can tell, obviously by the sky. And I think the tones worked and it was simply, when I was in editing or processing the image, I'd seen them on the computer and I thought the colors would match up quite well. So I'd gone for that symmetry thing. It's not perfect, but I think it sits, sits well. And, but I mean, cutting them out, out of a black background was, was, was hard work. Um, but that image has done really well. It's traveled quite a bit. Um, and I think Ross perfected the print at the end of the day to, to represent the club. So that's done really well. Next, please. <clears throat> Good and bad, I don't know, but a wee bit of a story here. I mean, top left, that's, that's my daughter. Um, and it was back in 2014, God love her. She was asked to do a bit of modeling, as, as, as you do. Father wants to take photographs, who's, who's available. So up into the attic where a wee bit of a studio set up and um, wasn't too many scarves about there, but um, it was all the sort of trend then, scarves around the head wrapped. And had her looking this way and the other. I think you can see with the catch lights, there's quite a few lights and reflectors bouncing on. So it's not a great image. I mean, there's probably loads of stuff wrong with it, but that did enter uh, my first camera club, which was CB. And there was a judge, I think it was a young lady from Balamina, brilliant photographer and owns her own studio. Lovely lady. Anyway, she judged the evening and she picked Dominique. As, a, as an image, and I thought, great, happy to ask, told to a daughter. But unbeknown to me, uh, CB rejudged it. The, the committee would sit and rejudge, and they decided not to put it through. But I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. So I'd been asking what has happened to this image. So it just shows, um, you know, I had a preferred feedback to say, like, why, why was it not chosen? But if there's issues, I could fix it. And, but it's a great memory, and daughter helped me out. Um, bottom right. Things moved on a wee bit. Um, this is young Ruth. She's actually, she belongs to Style Academy. She, she wants to be a model. Or This is one of Peggy's cousins, kids. Um, she's 52 second cousins. Um, so a load of potential models. Um, and yeah, Les Mis is one of my favorite shows. One that we would catch when we go to London. So I'd always got this in mind. I mean, th visually, the, the posters and stuff and the graphics, the things that I would love and I, I always wanted to try this. So Ruth, I knew Ruth had that look. So there you can see the black background, by the way, that's as uh, just bed sheets and uh, a very dodgy light gun on there. But same scenario, went to her house with her mum, set up the umbrellas and the mum held the hairdryer over to the right and the bed sheets make me laugh. but. The hairdryer worked and I was trying to catch both eyes. And it wasn't really going to, I mean, it was just a case of timing. But I think if, you know, if you're going to catch one eye, I think the one on the left sort of, sort of suits it. But that light kicking onto the back wasn't great. I think Ross pointed that out um, and he was suggesting it's darkening it down. I think it did eventually darken it down. But because uh, that done well for me as well, I think it's up in the attic. It's quite a good print. Again, one that maybe Ross has done. So, um, Love that we shot, great. Uh, next please. Yeah, it's, I was trying to say at the start when we were discussing this as a wee pre, pre talk that these aren't necessarily images that would have been entered in competitions or particularly favorites, but this is something because I work for the local paper, I get to cover a lot of sport. And this is a game that I love, I grew up playing. Um, that's my club. So uh, the black and greens. Uh, it's quite a local derby, this, and it's quite a prestigious youth tournament. So I was covering it for the paper. What a job. And 
uh, I'd noticed at the end when our club won, which was quite a surprise actually, a bit of a shock, young Andy uh, went running up the pitch. Now he'd run you know, two thirds of the pitch to catch this young boy. He was obviously inconsolable. And it transpired, he was actually, that's his school friend. And they're, they're good buddies. But in terms of sportsmanship, I thought it was fantastic. So what actually happened is I created this triptych or whatever, the three images and put it on the club's website and stuff. But it actually went viral throughout the country simply because of what young Andy had done. Um, he's a lovely young fella. And it actually got him an award. He got a youth award that year. Local youth awards were held and young Andy got some there. That's so, and deservedly so. So it's just about being in the right place. Long lanes might help. Or start, you know, just waiting for the action to occur. Lots was going on on the pitch at that time, but I just thought that, that that was special. So next, please. Yeah, so I'm now very uh, keen on some of you may know, you maybe have seen some of these images. I had this idea of taking on portraits. Uh, top left is my oldest grandson. Um, he's taller than me, shocking. He really has grown. But he was, <laughs> he was my first victim. Um, God love him. And he's using an old stick, really old stick. Uh, but I, I love these. Um, he's, he's wearing his club kit. Uh, again, the lights in the eyes. I think it was still using the umbrellas, plenty of light. Now, the backgrounds you might notice are quite similar. So, what I had done, because that is my club, I think I'm one of the few local clubs to get a, a 4G pitch. And um, I photographed every corner of it, uh, sort of HDR. And um, you got that blue R, you've got the lights, the floodlights, you've got, it just works. Now, Joseph's image, I think, went into the L panel and it was well received and that's grand. So I've done a lot of these for clubs and you get a few quid for it too. But the bottom right is actually the captain of our club, hence Captain Keeble, uh, quite an accomplished herder. So again, he was being used as sort of a promotional thing within the club and I decided to, to create this one and I think it went through to one of the, the L, L power. Irish panels or print panels, whatever it was, and it's done quite well. So a wee thing on the, uh, these seem to be going fairly well, so much so that I was photographing people inside the club and I had a, an appointment, I think it was like 7, 7.30 one night and the person hadn't arrived, so I rang them and they said, look, Joe, I'm here. I said, no, you're not. They were actually on the pitch and I was inside the club. So I was, was testament to the quality they thought everything occurred on the pitch but obviously they're, they're composites so um, got a knack of doing them I think they work well and uh, they're proven quite, quite popular next please landscapes oh, I love a landscape um, again I mentioned the market earlier I do, I do try and sell a few landscapes and square tends to be quite trendy so two stories quickly on Loch Ney uh, we went out with my um, good friend Raphael and Arleo uh, Cable didn't really work out, but our second visit was to Loch Ney and the trees or the fallen trees. I never, I never knew where they were. Now I do. Um, this was actually a mistake because it had filters uh, as we all were supposed to have. And the photographs were taken. Was I changed filter? It took a photograph. So that's the lower half is overexposed and the top half is the way it should have been. So I was able to merge the two together and play about with the highlights to bring it back a wee bit. I mean, if you were to look closely, you'll see there are issues, but it does look well. And center composition, but I suppose with a tree, it's giving you something to uh, look, look to on the bottom left side. Um, and that's proven quite popular. The one to the right has a bit of history too. Uh, this is a place, um, uh, apparently my mum, uh, down in Ross Glass, uh, my mum's mum. And apparently I was dragged down there when I was younger. So this is a picture I had to take. So my mum has this priority printed up on the wall. But on the night I went down, I contacted Raphael because he knows this place like a back of his hand. So it takes him about five, 10 minutes to get into it. It took me an hour. So I'm still I'm taking the picture well, where I thought I was taking the picture. And I heard this screaming from behind me and it was Raphael. You're in the wrong one place. So back I went. He took me further down towards St. John's Lighthouse and found a sweet spot. And we actually stood, and we were literally feet apart, tripods in the water, 
needless to say, I didn't have my wellies. Always bring your wellies. Now, Rayfields produce an image just as good, maybe better, and it has different colors and different tones. But again, beautiful place. Um, quite proud of that one. Okay, next. I don't know what's next. Oh, sorry. I, I Pardon the indulgence here. It's obviously some of the grandkids, my son's babies. Um, but a lot of these have come through the, um, the club. And they are, as I say, handy models. So top left was young Katie. Uh, photographed up in our bedroom. Got to use window light. I mean, that's what she was facing. So I had my back to the big window and you can see that in her eyes. I may have bounced a flash um, just, just to capture, but the background is, is quite funny. Bring your valleys. The background's quite funny because I, I didn't have any, it was only me and Katie. So I actually propped up six pillows behind her. To, you know, and then everything became sort of high key. So I was able to obviously clone out any, any the markings in between the pillows. And her hair's still a mess, God love her. Uh, she's beautiful, beautiful eyes, greeny blue eyes, stunning. Bottom right is young Donald. He's the youngest grandchild. And it's actually the same shot a few years later. He's in the same bedroom. But this time his mother came up and she held a white bed sheet. And he's stunning eyes. As you can see from the shot on the left, which is Donny to date, he's about three. Um, and that was used for the uh, natural light portraits, I think. And so I had to, as you do with kids, I had to tell him Santa was in the garden. So he was, he was duking out to see where Santa was, God love him. He's the most beautiful eyes and the most beautiful hair. So he always gets mistaken for, for the uh, wee girl. Top right, just to finish, is uh, Callum. He's the oldest, um, my son's grandkids. And this was weird because I'd taken him, similar scenario with, with the natural light, um, I think it was a wee 50 mil lens and he was looking up he was just sitting on the edge of the bed now I put this into the club and I think it was a Nyleen McCausland came in to judge one night and she found there was something quite weird about his eyes but he has got really really dark eyes and I couldn't work out what she was saying and, and, and Ross actually agreed because I think Ross stood up she said I think that's a great portrait and so he was all he was all for me so um Great grandkids, beautiful. Next, please. This is me finishing. Um, I think it's my 11 slides, so sneak this one in. But again, uh, working with a paper, you get to meet so many people. Uh, this is Andre. Some of you may have seen him. Or, um, he came to the club in one of the music photo nights. But I had actually met him at Sailor Town, and it was an event called Little Italy, because that's where a lot of the Italians uh, had grown up around there. So. It was an event I was covering with the paper and he sort of stood out. Um, <laughs> but um, Andre had something about him and it, it, it transpired that he is an actor. Uh, he's been in Game of Thrones, but then he hasn't. Um, but there, there was just something about him and we got to know him and, uh, you know, got, arranged a bit of a shoot. Um, his English is awful, so he, he is hard to work with. Um, he did come in. And I think Claire Marie might probably remember she had to endure him as well. He's great outfits. Um, I've done a few shoots with him, and there, there's something about Andre. i uh, very fond of him. And that one there, I think, went in recently. Bit of a textured background. Uh, looks the part. And finally, on the right then, is Daniel. Um, met him down at the Dockers. Cover a lot of boxing, a lot of sports, obviously, with the paper. And these boys were on their way to Liverpool. And... Uh, Daniel was a coach. He is still a coach. Coaches a lot of the local bo uh, boxers, rather, uh, really good potential boxers. He's also a personal trainer. Now, the reason through this thing is it's gone into the club. I think Kenny and Rayfield made had similar shots. Um, but the day we shot this was down New Forge uh, with all the, the grungy graffiti. And for whatever reason, I had two cameras, but none of them were working. It's just It was probably me. Um, they wouldn't sync with the flash, nothing was working for me, but this is probably the only shot that sort of came out. And obviously, always remember to bring your, your, your props. So I had to wait tall to try and pick up that, uh, you know, typical boxing shot and uh, caught him quite well. He's quite proud of that one. That's me, so thanks. That's your time completed there, Joe. Absolutely well done. I'm gonna open the floor for anybody who wants to ask you any questions. Could I, could, I oh, just yeah. say, could I just say to Joe, thank you very much, that you're quite right. I've seen those, most of us have seen the images over time. 
and we never tire of them, Joe. They're beautiful, beautiful images. Thank you. And in fact, I like the way you presented them as a photographic journey. Uh, that again, most of us in the club have been with you on. So <laughs> we've seen them at various uh, times come through, but beautiful, beautiful images. It's great to hear the stories actually behind it. I would add a little bit to your Guy Dore. Uh, the door, yeah, okay. Of, of Eddie's boat. It actually, I believe that it was a, a problem between a wife and a husband, and uh, the, the husband let the boat go, so to speak, and the, the thing ran aground, and that was the retribution he exacted it from his wife. Yeah, so, but it, I should add it. It's always great when you're you're trying to sell an image. If you've got that story, I mean, the, the story can sell the image. Yeah, uh, I, I do believe now they're going they're going to erect steel. In, in, in its place because the boat's going to disappear. It's so gone completely. Well, it's not gone. Oh, I, yeah. The, okay. The keels left and the straits have gone. But anyway, oh, thank you very much. Okay. And, uh, Cheers, Brian. I like that. So, what was that, Rafael? Good lord. Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> bring, your, bring your wellies. Anyway, oh. is, is that all the. Uh, the well, I. Okay. Speak. Obviously, if you look at the chat below, do you see people have been expressing opinions through your presentation? But now I would like to uh, invite Jill Crockett. Actually, very Phil. I know that. Could I, could I invite Jill to offer her presentation? It's pleasing to. Sorry, bear with me. We're having issues. So Jill, you should be good to go if you're happy enough. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Brilliant. There we go. Ready to go. Yeah. Um, so I, um, I thought I would try and put together um, some images that uh, you haven't really seen uh, before. Uh, there's one or two in there that I've shown before, but um, I know the novice gets a bit more attention uh, throughout the year. Um, so, um, so instead of, of showing uh, all the same images again, I thought I'd maybe take um, you on a bit of a journey on some of the, the things that I have dabbled with um, and um, learned and, and developed as I've tried different photographs um, and, and different styles of, of things. Um, and as you'll see, it's, it's probably a bit of an eclectic mix of uh, landscape sports uh, a few portraits uh, shown in art thrown in there um, uh, and, and of course some some wildlife um, so yeah we can move on to the the first image and um, so this is one you've possibly seen before and um, this is uh, Lusty Moor um, and it's on Lower Loch Urn it's a little island not far from Lusty Beg um, and uh, it, it's sort of a, a bit of a wildlife haven now. You can get to it uh, by boat. Uh, it was, I think, originally owned by the forestry, but they then decided it was too expensive to cut down all the trees there. So it just left as a bit of um, overgrown. Um, but I thought I'd put this one in because it was the first time I sort of tried to, to dabble with HDR photography. Um, I'd never really um, tried it before, but here, because there was quite a bright sky, um, I, um, I took my three shots um, and, and brought it home, put it into Photoshop, and I think I actually used the uh, Photoshop HDR uh, software, which wasn't great. Um, and um, I thought I'd show you uh, the results of that on the, the next image which was horrendous uh, to me. So um, I parked that image and, uh, and didn't, uh, didn't touch it for a long time um, until I came across uh, some uh, techniques uh, of uh, blending photographs using luminosity mask, uh, lap masks. Um, and uh, the previous image is, is actually three exposures um, blended blended all together. Um, so one is the, the base exposure of the sky. Um, the second is the, uh, the exposure for the foreground. And then the third was a, a darker exposure for the, um, for the sun um, on this, uh, in the, the top left. Um, and um, it's always one that, uh, that people have liked. Um, I think maybe just the, 
the, the soft tones and colours um, in the sky. Um, but, but yeah, I thought I'd show because it's, it's, it's one of the first times I actually dabbled with, with luminosity masks. Um, and I've included the original as well to just show um, how dark um, and how bright the sky was and, and what, I, what I had to deal with. Um, next image. Um, this is also on um, Loch Urn. This is um, Upper Loch Urn this time. Um, if, if people don't know already, I um, grew up in Fermanagh and had been around the lochs for a long time. So it's, it's quite dear to, to my heart. And um, I've been on boats probably since I was about three weeks old. Uh, so um, I just love, love the water um, and love taking pictures of it. And um, this uh, particular time was at sunrise. The boat in the picture is actually my um, dad's boat and we'd moored up for the, for the evening. And, um, and that morning, very early, I probably woke everyone on the boat, but uh, got up uh, probably about half five, six o'clock to, to catch the sunrise. And um, quite often in the summertime on Loch Urn, uh, you can see there that the lovely mist that lies over, over the, the loch and, and the surrounding fields and, and areas. Um, and you just get, uh, get that lovely atmosphere. Um, this is a, a panoramic shot. The, the two jetties on either side are actually the same jetty. Um, but, uh, I also had a had a bit of a thing to to try different panoramas um, at a time as well. Um, yeah, next image. Uh, this one again is is a bit of a panorama, um, three hundred and and sixty degree panorama. Uh, this time it's uh, it's called Bermuda Planet. Um, I'm probably not many people have been to Bermuda, but. Um, what you can see here is um, quite like the shape of the, the whole island. Um, so it's, uh, I just, whenever I did the, the 360 degree panorama, um, I loved the fact that um, it just kind of looked like you were uh, viewing the island. Um, what this was actually taken uh, at the top of the lighthouse that's in the middle of, uh, of the image there. Uh, and uh, again, uh, a panoramic shot all the way around the top of the lighthouse. Um, when I when I originally put this together, the the centre was horrendous. It was full of um, green trees, and um, and you couldn't you couldn't really um, you know that was dominating the the, the picture. So uh, it actually this image encouraged me to uh, then go out and buy a drone. So uh, the, the image in the center, that is actually a, a different shot uh, put in where um, I flew my drone above the, the lighthouse that I was actually standing on to take the majority of the image um, and then um, incorporated that into, into the picture. Um, but yeah, it's not necessarily um, as most of these pictures aren't um, a competition uh, worthy image uh, but uh, it's it's one that I, I still really like and I love as well the the colors in the sea and the waters and that's actually what uh, the sea color is in Bermuda because it's sort of a, a white um, white sandy beach bottom um, with reefs and everything um, so, so yeah um, that's that one uh, the next one I know a few people have, have seen before. Uh, this is a, an American bald eagle and um, it's actually been taken at a, a wildlife sanctuary in Kent uh, that takes in oils and um, birds of prey. Uh, and this actually was, um, was one of a, a pair of bald eagles that were actually stolen from the nest in America, um, and um, and uh, unfortunately, the guy who stole 
uh, stole them, couldn't actually handle them whenever they uh, grew up. And, um, and he eventually released them back into the wild. But because they had grown up with him and, um, and taken food uh, from him, all they knew uh, to feed themselves was to, to steal food from other humans. So they actually became pests. And um, uh, and uh, it wasn't until this wildlife sanctuary uh, was able to take them in that otherwise they would have would have just uh, been shot in America or or uh, put down. Uh, but yeah, I absolutely loved uh, this image and just the the way that uh, the expression I suppose on the bird's face and the talons coming in just coming in for its its prey for its dinner. Um, and uh, originally, actually, it was another one of these photographs that I, I took and loved, but uh, just set aside because the background was horrific. It's actually um, a whole bunch of bare leaf trees, uh, or no leaves on, on, on the trees. Uh, and there was a bright blue sky that day. Um, and it was coming uh, right through the the background. So what I eventually um, did when I figured out how to how to edit was um, to to desaturate the background um, and and bring out all the textures and details in in the feathers on on the eagle itself. And um, so just to to show, I've included the original as well to show what it looked like. And you can see that background is terribly distracting um, because of the bright sun that day, all the, the white, particularly on the, on the head, was, was quite, um, quite bright. Um, so I brought those, um, those details back um, and tried to emphasize, uh, emphasize, emphasize the bird. Um, next one. Um, these are little sandlings uh, that I found on a beach in Florida. Uh, I'd actually got up early that morning to, uh, with the intention of taking some sunrise shots on the beach. Um, but when I got there, I suppose I hadn't really scouted it out enough, but um, I took my sunrise pictures, but it wasn't all that interesting. The wildlife that was on the beach was amazing. Uh, there was these little sandlings, there was some willets um, walking along, uh, there was even a a brown pelican, although it was too fast for me to, to take a picture of, but um, then I, I spent quite a lot of time um, that morning just sitting on the beach um, and, and uh, the, the little sandlings um, walking around uh, looking for their uh, breakfast uh, basically and as the waves came in and, and out. Um, and yeah, I just Loved the the sunrise uh, light on this and the, and the shadows on the beach and the simplicity. Um, unfortunately, it would have been nicer in hindsight to have uh, both of the birds in focus. Um, but um, but yes, yeah, I, I still really like it. Yeah, next one. Um, this one is actually was taken quite a long time ago. Again, back to. To Lockern. Um, another one of the things that we like to do on Lockern is some water skiing. So this is actually my cousin Sarah. Um, and I just love the expression on her face as she's uh, getting ready to, to set off to, to ski. And um, just the um just the sort of apprehension of the uh, of the enjoyment. Um, and again another one where I um sort of this is one of the first major bits of, of cloning uh, that I I looked at doing. So in the background, um hopefully you can't notice at the moment, but um there was actually a person sitting on the jetty um and uh thought that was very distracting. Uh so I I took uh, took the notion to to spend a long time trying to clone it out so you can see in the original. Um, but uh, it was quite a lot of, of effort spent um, for that, uh, just to simplify the image. Um, and again, another thing I love about it is is just the the way the water ripples out um, from the the skier. 
Yeah, next one. Um, a bit of sports, unusual sports photography. Um, I love going to sporting events and wherever I go, if I can, um, I'll take my camera. Um, and this one is actually um, America's Cup. It's probably not one that many people know, but uh, it's one of the oldest uh, sporting cups uh, there is. And um, it's sort of like a very ad hoc thing. Uh, but I think it was 2017, it was in Bermuda. Uh, and this, uh, this is, uh, or was the defending champions. Uh, and they have uh, six sailors. Uh, the boat is pretty much flying out of the water. Uh, you can see uh, the blade on the, on the back there, the red blade. Um, there's that and two others on the other side and that is the only thing on that boat that is touching the water um, and uh, whenever whenever they uh, want to turn to, to do a tack or a jibe um, they have to frantically run from one side of the boat to the other as they make that maneuver so it's it's can be pretty exciting but it's quite hard to actually uh, get uh, or get close enough I guess to the action um, but this is probably one of my favorite shots from that um, yeah I think next one um, this one again um, I love to to take reflections and shadows and um, and I again I take my camera uh, snow skiing so one of these times when I was in the Three Valleys with my friend Chris, um, I just uh, saw this reflection in his goggles and had to stop him and say, wait there uh, and, um, and take this landscape in, in his goggles. And I just love the uh, perspective, I guess, of um, the mountains and the snow uh, reflected, um, reflected in, in, in someone else's vision I guess or through someone else's eyes. Um, I did uh, spend a bit of time cleaning up the mask because there was um, some some marks and things uh, but I also loved the, the placement of, of the people within that just giving it a little sense of scale and, um, and, and a little bit more interest I suppose in the scene. Yeah the next um this one again definitely not a competition shot or portrait of any any kind and um, this was two of my friends at a wedding um but the reason i'm showing it here is because this is the first time i sort of dabbled with editing for portraits um i wanted to to use this as a as a christmas present and um so i i looked at how how you edit edit for portraits and for models um, so I learned things like frequency separation to even out some of the skin tones um, I looked at uh, brightening up the eyes um, at even uh, changing the colors of uh, the bags under the eyes uh, whitening some teeth uh, and then played around with some some color toning. Um, I actually think I have some orange or red in the, the highlights and some sort of green, very, very subtle green um, in, in the shadows. Um, also uh, in the background, completely uh, blurred that out and tried to uh, minimize the distractions. And to, to show you the difference, I've, I've also included the original. So uh, people in the background, very distracting. Um, but yeah, I was quite, I was quite pretty pleased with the, the results of that. And, and I think they enjoyed that as a, as a Christmas present. Um, and then the last one, um, I've not really done any or many um, portrait or studio um, work. Uh, it's probably something that I would 
I would like to get into, but I'm a bit nervous and apprehensive about. Uh, but this one was at uh, a previous camera club that I was at in, in Stevenage in England. Um, and um, I only recently, sort of after um, Ross's edit on, uh, on Kenny's um, high key shot, um, I thought I would uh, try, uh, try it with this one a little bit. Um, and um, I didn't actually do that much work in terms of frequency separation or anything like that. Um, mostly uh, looked at sort of the, the black and white conversion, a bit of dodging and burning. Um, uh, but as you can probably see, this is the only black and white image in my collection. So I don't really do an awful lot of that um, uh, either, which uh, I'm definitely going to have to try and dabble a bit more in. Um, but yeah, I was quite, uh, quite, quite pleased with uh, the results of of this one um, and yeah I would like to try try a bit more um, on the portrait side as well. But yeah that's me if anyone has any questions or, um, or anything. That's fantastic shot there Jill, particularly the, uh, the law, <coughs> excuse me, the Loch Iron and the Bermuda, absolutely fantastic, I'd say those could even grace the advanced sections. Um, the rest are absolutely fantastic, well done, I'll open the floor to everyone now. Thank you. Yes, yeah. yes, Jill, I would just echo what yeah. William said, the uh, fantastic images. And again, I, I love the presentation of before and after, just to illustrate the, the high degree of work you put in to obtaining the final image. But I was taken actually, like William, by the uh, 360 degree photograph of Bermuda. For, until you explained the drone, I was just wondering where you had gone to to take the photograph. <laughs> Were you at a high <laughs> ladder or a balloon? I'm not quite certain. And as a guy who's done a bit of sailing, I was looking for the spreader ropes that were going to lower the catamaran into the into the sea there. I didn't realize that, that the thing was flight in flight. So thank you very much. Wonderful set of images and uh, uh, keep at it. Well, I'm very brave to, to accept to do that with the, uh, the level of photographers here and given that you're a novice yourself. So absolutely well done. I'm glad I went there. And not after. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, we, we had to let Joe go first, otherwise he wouldn't be able to get the words out. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Isn't that changed his name? Sponsored by Jameson. Uh -huh. Joey Jameson. Yeah, Joey yeah, Jameson. You're doing, you're doing Joey. well with those big jobs. I think it works well, Joey Jameson. Okay, okay. so what we're going to do there is we're going to take a break now right. until 10 to 9. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back with, uh, I believe, David, David, isn't it? David Wright will then take over and display his shots. So, as I say, okay, so next up we have David Wright. Uh, David's a member of three clubs, I believe. You correct me if I'm wrong there, David. Um, and he holds the LIPF. So over to you, David. Thank you, William. Yes, I'm a member of Balamoney, BPEC, and catch light, of course. Um, sorry about my screen at the moment. The network adapter of my main computer is a bit flaky, and it just went right at the be beginning of tonight. So I'm on my laptop now in the corner, and you all you can see is a wee black head there. Uh, anyway, I'll make a start. I planned to do a completely different set of images than what you're going to see. But I was looking at Colin Ross's set on uh, at one of the 10 by 10 videos. And he was saying something like, um, I try to keep my landscapes showing only the landscape. And it started me thinking, I mostly do that. When I can, that is kind of the first image. This is Ross Bay, and we used to go to dog shows, take we used to compete in dog shows, and this is in the third week in August every year. There's what they call the Munster Circuit, and there's five dog shows in eight days. So we rented a house down beside this beach. 
and this is in the evening after the dog shows and it's raining actually raining a wee bit and there's a couple of people coming down and i think they you know i'm saying i want only landscapes but i think they provide a focal point in this shot and uh, a this was actually in competition, one of the neighbor ones, and it did quite well. If you're looking about halfway up in it, um, Gabriel O'Shaughnessy was on one of the videos there, and he was talking about the wreck of the sunbeam. And you can just about see that really in the background of this image. Um, next slide, please. So when I'm on the beach there, when I was there, of course, I'd my dogs with me. But usually when I go to the beach, they'll be there. And sometimes I think they add to the scene. And sometimes they're in the way. But they always love it. And you can see them running about. And having a great time and makes me enjoy the scenery even more. Uh, you can see the sunbeam a bit better now. Uh, kind of the next slide, William. This is the, the bit he had. And of course, this was the wrong time. The tide wasn't in, but I had checked the tide tables. It was in when we were at the dog show. But it's it's not too bad. The people in the background, you know, sort of add to the the shot again. And uh, kind of the next one. Uh, this is one of my dogs, Mac. I don't think he thought too much of the shot either, um, or the sunbeam, and that's what he got up to. Uh, Next slide, please. This is Castle Rock, very early in the morning. You're just speaking about early shots. I, I go out, I live up in Coleraine, and I'm on the beach, even in the last few days, I'm on the beach half four in the morning, such like, in fact, one day last week, it was half three. The sunrise looks very, calm and peaceful here and there's even a, a faint mist bow but just out of shot next slide please there's my dogs it's not so calm and peaceful here abby has seen a a bird and she's chasing the bird and max chasing abby and i love this you know when when you've got the the scene it's looking really good but all around it, there's chaos or something else going on. Next slide, please. And again, this is a very early, I think this was about half four in the morning at downhill. And I really like it just before, or well, just about sunrise. You've got the clouds at the top and then the reflection on the wet sand. It's just been after the high tide and the tide's going out again but the sand's wet you get a lovely reflection there on it but then next slide then one of the dogs wanders then and i don't know for me she adds to the picture but <laughs> other people might like this at all uh i'll leave it to you to choose which you would prefer. Next slide, please. This is again, this is a downhill beach, just the, there's a wee stream enters uh, between Benone Beach and Downhill. And there's a lot, at that time, it, it wanders all over the place, the stream, because the beach is so flat, it depends on the wind, and how much water's in the stream, what sort of shape the stream has. And it had a lovely curve, and you can see the peaky water here. 
at one side and then it goes into much lighter shades. And then of course the dog wanders in it again, you know. But I like that, <laughs> again, I like that the dogs wandering up by. Um, can I have the next one, please? Next slide. Sometimes I manage to get out of the country. This is Slovenia, where there was a lovely misty morning and the sun's just coming up behind these trees and it's beginning to burn away the mist. But of course I have my dogs with me so I can shoot what I want, I think. Next slide, please. You should have that slide up there. It's up. Okay. Yeah, it's it now. Well, I haven't got my dogs with me, but I get some other animals coming into the picture. The There was about five or six cattle here, and they saw me coming, and of course they're very curious. They wander over, and I'm dying to get a shot of the cabin, you know, but have to wait. I wandered down a wee bit, the one side or the other, but the cows stayed in the best place for a shot. So I was a bit stuck. Next slide. And here in Canada, I was in Canada in this one, and I was wandering about the, the beach on this lake. This is Two Jack Lake, and that's Mount Rundle in the background. And I was wanting to get the sun just kissing the top of the mountains here and trying to move around to get the best position. And of course, there's no dogs with me there. Next slide, please. But in comes a goose, or a couple of geese actually. And this one, he took a fancy to my tripod and I couldn't, I couldn't get him out of the way. And I was thinking, God, the sun is gonna come and hit the whole mountain here and I'll never be ever able to get the picture taken at all. So it was, I was beginning to get paranoid, you know, with, Wherever I go, I'm going to get some animals coming in. Next slide. Even in the studio, I had Mishka uh, up in Catch Light Studio, and I was thinking, my God, is she bullfighting? Is there a black bulls over in the corner somewhere? Next slide, please. And even in, in Valencia, I thought the, this blue whale had come out and eaten all of the architecture in the city of arts and sciences. Just paranoid it was getting. Next slide. Now, I have a wee studio at home and I try to do some portraits, but sometimes the models, they're a wee bit nervous. And next slide, last slide. But if you have a happy, friendly dog with you, then that usually breaks the ice for you. That's it. That's mine. Told you that would be quick, will you? Yeah, that was. I thought quicker than I thought, especially when we were looking at the numbers and uh, right about balance this all out. Well, well done. Thank you very much. Um, um, yeah, David, David, uh, some really, really stunning landscapes in there, and obviously interspaced with the uh, the portrait that I didn't even realise was Mishka. And I, I've been looking at that half of the day. <laughs> Thank you very I'll, much. I'll open David. it up for other questions. So uh, I think it was Terry McCreese there. You reminded me of Doctor Doolittle a little. Have a part of the bomb. And uh, but anyway, your your shots were extremely enjoyable. I do love anyone that loves a dog. So um, you, you've gained percent in my book. So thank you again. Lovely to see Canada in all its glory once more and the geese. Mm. Um, 
anyway, are we on to the next one then, William? Or uh, we... Just to have anyone else have any questions any or anything questions? to say for David? Sorry. David? Yeah. Joe Jameson here. <laughs> 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 and I'll go down well, sure. Um, I'm actually on to the sole Mexican beer, by the way. I, I'm just curious. The, the, landscapes, the landscapes are lovely. I love the tones. There's like a, a lot of pink. Do you use any filters? Or? When I'm out with the dogs, no. Probably not. Okay. It's just handheld. But when I'm uh, out otherwise, you know, um, I do. Yeah, beautiful colors. Good job. Anyone else before we move on? Thanks, David. Lovely images. Thank you. Yep. Now, comes now comes the lies. Now comes the lies. L I P F C P A G B. When did that happen? Fake news. Ah, fake news. It's just Trump, the same stuff. He just he just changes the name. It's the same stencil. It is. <laughs> it actually is, Joe. It is. <laughs> You make them up for me, William? Yeah, mate, I thought uh, I'd thanks. give you a couple of letters to make you feel better. Uh, you've just done the run up to Bob's massive collection <laughs> of letters after his name. I'll be drunk by <laughs> What do you mean by that? Oh, okay. you go. Gotcha. All right, give me a second, Stuart, whilst I mute everyone. No worries. I don't know about Stuart. <gasps> Uh, Stuart, you're good to go. Okay, so first slide up then, William. Uh, as you saw there, it was uh, I'm net what LIPF and CPAGB, and um, I suppose is my fourth full season now with Catchlight. Um, and this was a red kite image that I had gone to. Belly Mac Farm over in Scotland on a random visit with a, another photographer from Larn who phoned me out of the blue and said he was going so we did a car share. Um, so I went with huge expectations, um, my 70 to 200, my double extender thinking, yeah, I'll end up with massive shots. And I ended up with one out of about 500. And this one image, I think has been entered a couple of times, got starred and actually got me a Wilma Crumb. But I was never really very happy with it. And then... Sure. I'm sorry to stop you. I wouldn't have got a Wilma Crumb. Wilma was Crumb, it not? Wilma Crumb's a portraiture competition. Oh no, what's the other one then? Neil Marshall. Sorry, it was Neil Marshall. Sorry. Because it was part of the panels. <laughs> Apologies for that. Family. Or Roy Finlay, it could have been. I'll have to go and look it up again. Anyway, it won me a medal. <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose following on from comments maybe that Bob made last weekend or last week during the, uh, the summer fun, if you go to the next one, William, I flicked it and I ran it through a denoise um, filter as well so i know that sometimes on the screens they don't make much of a change but to but me Stuart. yeah I, I pulled the highlight down in the wing um and it has affected the background i know my screen it looks a lot more pixelated now but it looked a lot smoother that'll be zoom Stuart. and it's also yeah. still a lot of the little worms have all gone yeah um, it's only ever been shown. I have it printed on the wall and it looks great, um, but it's. I think it's about time it got entered into a salon. Perhaps is one thing I never have actually ever done is go the salon route. So I might start entering those. But it seems to have punched out the edges of the bird as well now, better than the, the original. Next one, William. Uh, I guess <laughs> following on from that theme, um, I suppose this got nine in our uh, last, was it the last round of potty? And the only comment really, and one also from Bob, was the skirt. So I had a look at it, but again on the right hand side, it wasn't until I saw it again, there's a line all the way down 
the image where I have badly photoshopped things. Um, this is Fanny Muller, and it was actually shot as an upright, so she's actually jumping up. But I was playing around with crops and uh, the way she was arching and everything else. Uh, and I decided to call it an elegant, I think it's elegant dive or something. So if you go on to the next one, William. I have been playing with the warp tool to try and pull the skirt up to follow the legs. Um, I even tried puppet warp. So this is where I've got to it in a minute. Um, possibly the highlights on the face need to come down again. Um, but it's getting there and it's just getting a bit of practice to do with the, the movement in the dress. Don't think it's enough yet, but I'm very conscious of going over overboard on it. So next one. Right, obviously, um, there's going to be a few of these in here because Jamie, who is the my son, took up rowing for Methodist College what, three, four years ago, um, along with the three other, the four other gentlemen in the boat here, Matthew, Bradley, Jack, and I think that's Ziad, who's the cox at the front. This is an image that was taken down in Dublin for their first regatta. So it's quite interesting because none of them are looking anywhere but where they should be going or they're getting themselves ready. But this was their first ever regatta image. So it holds a little bit of a background. Coaches and everything went down and it was never expected that this group of four young men, first year rowing, would do anything brilliant. They actually ended up winning their category on the day. Um, so it came as a great shock to everybody. And from then, if you want the next one, William, they developed into a bit of a well-known quad, both uh, on the lagging and around the circuit. So you have, uh, I think it's Matthew at Stroke, who's the first one. Jack, who's the second, Jamie, and then Bradley at the back. This was the defence the following year, which they defended again and outright winners again um, for that comp the following year's competition. Um, it's appeared on a couple of shared websites with the school. And it was from this that the school actually asked me to start taking pictures for the rowing club. Um, and I have a couple actually up on now online with the school as part of their extracurricular activity. Now, these four young men then went on, if you go to the next slide, William, to an international competition at Ghent, which was the first time in 10 years that the school had had a group of people or a group of rowers that were uh, good enough, I suppose, if you like, to go to Ghent. So this was uh, May of last year. But again, it always fascinated me how eight young men are all individuals in the boat. And yet when it comes to the race, they all pull together. So you notice nobody is doing exactly the same. And I think in some of them, there's two of them are yawning from the night before and three or four are trying to sort themselves out before they launch to go off to the competition. But these, I suppose since lockdown, I have been looking at developing um, next panel of images, I suppose, for my A panel, for the AIPF. So it's trying to pick now 15 black and whites that, um, kind of portray rowing from the school's point of view. And I've kind of made a wee bit of a sideline deal with the coaches that if I am successful or unsuccessful, um, that the panel of images will go up on the boat, boat club wall. Um, kind of decided to do them all black and white. So if you've got the next one, William, because you end up with getting blues and colors and everything all wrong. This is my one of my favorite images. It's just a grab shot. And it looks like they've all been naughty boys and the coach is telling them off. 
but it's actually meant to be a pep talk at Irish national champions down in Cork. Um, but it always, always amazes me that none of them are looking at the coach in the eye and yet he's given them words of advice for the next race. And they were successful in that race and that series as well. So they've come away with medals for everything. So quite good lot of boys. Unfortunately, with COVID, uh, no rowing. So next one. Another thing I've been doing in lockdown is playing with uh, some new purchases. So I have been, I have gone to the expense of a macro uh, and a flashlight or two. And I've been playing with little uh, figures like these. Um, so this is actually a split tea bag made to look like earth and then little figures from railways out planting the uh, vegetables but it's something that I've been doing in lockdown and it may actually form another panel so if you go to the next one so I used the tea bags again and another set of figures and did something different so this is them cleaning up the mess uh, next one. Again, just taking snapshots from around the house. Uh, this is the inside of a clematis flower from out the back. I've always wanted to photograph it, but never really was happy with any of the images I was getting out of it. So this is me practicing and playing around with uh, macro lens. A little bit of adjustment on it and a bit of a vignette around the side. And it's done. Not too much to it. What's the next one, William? I think some people have seen this one before. Again, inside the house, and this is just window light, um, but it's one of the helibores I have out the front, which um, I was trying to do a high key, but I think I'll go back to it again um, and maybe watch one of Rossi's videos or some of the advice he's been giving about high key stuff because there's a big, big shadow in the middle that I'd love to get rid of. Um, I think it was Colin had advised me as well, maybe to put a bit of a grayer background in behind it, which I was trying to do the other night again on this, but it's something I'll come back and revisit. Uh, next one. And again, I have a purple hellebore out the front as well. Um, and this was again taken with window lighting. Um, I'm just playing around. I was just playing around with the window either being shuttered, unshuttered, um, and a bit of tin foil to try and throw light back onto it again. So I suppose it's taking the experience uh, from working or being in the studio with Ross and being able to translate that into something just by using a bit of window light. And I think that's the last one, William. That is your 10, Stuart. Well done. Absolutely great little pun. I, I personally love the creativity involved in the little people. And to be honest, I'd love to see you do a panel of those, 15 of those. They get very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're up to the floor now, Stuart. Hey, no worries. Yeah, Thank you very much, Stuart. That's a very excellent presentation as usual. Um, I do love your uh, journey or adventure into macro and indeed the creativity of the models and so forth. A very uh, useful exercise when we're all locked down. I think the macro is something I was, I'm interested in, yep. and it's something that I want to expand again on, or like start expanding on. There's a huge range of stuff that people do with macro. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just what the usual. Get, Sorry? What lens did you get for macro? Uh, the 2.8 100. Yeah. How's the place working in? In getting one. Sorry, John. I'm kind of interested in getting them. Trying to thinking of getting a macro lens. Um, you can. I um, wouldn't mind if you want. You can borrow mine if you want. I can leave it on the doorstep for a while, and you can borrow it. Um, Mine's closer, John. Same here, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fight over it, boys. But, uh, All right. I. To be seal here. To be honest, the only reason it took me to the 100, John, is because you could use it for a bit more. Right. You can use it as a portrait lens. You could probably take it out as 
you know, we don't want to say a walk around lens, but at least you've got it a bit does. More it doubles up cover. Like a great portrait lens, yeah. Yeah, sure. You know, that, uh, very sharp. That idea I was discussing with you. I wouldn't mind using that 100 for it. Yeah, no worries. Sure, it's a matter of interest. Does the rowing coincide with the starting back of schools, or do the rowing clubs, are they independent of Methody in many ways? The other rowing clubs on the Lagan are independent to Methody. Methody is a pure schools mm -hmm. rowing club. Um, Belfast Boat Club have been back, um, but they're only doing singles. Yeah. Um, and I think they have the coaching staff and, the, and the, the, there are enough uh, senior rowers to help because, of course, you can't help them into the boat. Mm -hmm. um, and you can't help them in or out of the boat. Um, so they have to be confident enough to get into a boat on their own. You can't do pairs, you can't do quads, you can't do eights. <laughs> which is where the concentration at school is. Um, and it, it's, it's kind of thrown me, but it has made me look back over my rowing images mm -hmm. um, in terms of doing a black and white panel, yeah. because I've never seen a black and white panel of rowing images, and there may be a very good reason for that. <laughs> okay, um, but no more. Stuart? Yes, Joe. Did, did you make the wee brushes for the wee? Which brushes? You know, for the men, the wee sweet thing with the wee? No, they came. All if right, up, sir. If you look up Prizer, All railway right. figures, they do oh, some okay. really good ones. There is a forensics kit one, which is basically guys in white hazmat suits taking pictures that right. I would love to get my hands on. But, um, they Love the tea bags. It. That was right. Any in stock. Very inventive. Well, the next one's going to be sugar cubes. But can you <laughs> buy them in the shops? I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're still selling sugar cubes, yeah. Or rice. Well, you can't buy that in the shops. No, nor pasta. <laughs> <laughs> Good man, shirt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, shirt. Thanks, shirt. Thank you. And I was going to bring up Bob Gibbon, but he seems to have disappeared from the list. Oh, that's fine. Night -night. Oh, there he is. There he is. Okay, <laughs> next up, uh, we have a man who's got more letters after his name than in, it, than in his name. And what we're about to see is 15 images of American football. So Any I'm going to hand over to, to Bob Gibbon, MPAGB. E uh, E F E P E P S A F B P E, and it's probably got a lot more than that. So, Bob, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, I decided that since the last rugby I shot was either on the tenth or the eleventh of March, it was um, Campbell College or RBAI in the Medallion Shield, or Craig Avon High School, or uh, Belfast. Or sorry. Holly Clare Secondary in the High Schools Cup. It's lost in the mists of time uh, that I would put forward 15 images that have no sport in them whatsoever. Uh, so they're a mixture of landscapes and various other bits and pieces. It's the last 10, 11 weeks have been the opportunity to um, revisit uh, a lot of folders, etc. In fact, discover some folders that I have never actually processed in the first place. So can we have the first one, please? Um, I think this may have been seen last week, though, when it was a letterbox form. This is the full image. Uh, Valencia, early one morning, I think it probably about six o'clock. We went on a trip last June with Iñaki, um to Valencia. It involved six o'clock starts, breakfast at uh, half past eight, lunch about one o'clock, siesta for two or three hours, and then out for the evening and an evening meal then at 10.30. Uh, and didn't have to wonders to my system but that's another story uh, this is very much a grab shot because most of the stuff was shot on tripod this is actually it was handheld uh, around the back of the arts and sciences building three uh, individuals family out for a walk and the the reflection was perfect and um, as I say that's full frame the um, figures are fortunately exactly on the right place okay um, London, we do 
two or three times a year we go to London primarily to, with the excuses to visit our daughter uh, who lives not very far away from here on the, the South Bank. Uh, the view out her uh, kitchen window is Canary Wharf. Uh, this is a little bit further upstream with County Hall and um, the Shard and the Belfast. It was a fairly gloomy day. The sun came out for a matter of a few minutes, if that, uh, and lit up the edge of the Shard and lit up the edge of the buildings. And there's a, a little bit of work done um, darkening the image down and, and, and so that the highlights start to come out a bit more. <coughs> okay. Uh, sorry, could we go back one, please? Thank you. Uh, uh, the, the dark area between County Hall and the building in front, uh, there's an alleyway up the side. Go forward, please. And uh, six more London Place is in this uh, walkway between County Hall and London Bridge Station. Uh, I know a lot of it is lost in me with my sight deficiencies, etc. Uh, but this has actually done quite well for me in travel photography. And for the first instance, I've actually cracked and got a few acceptances in travel. Uh, and uh, it's the two individuals walking away from each other with all the crowds in the background uh, reflected in the, uh, the, 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 the building. Uh, I think that's, it's, it's had its three acceptances. I'm at present um, trying to get my MPSA. Uh, and it involves strike three. Uh, you get three acceptances and then the image is dead. And you require 750 images from the, um, the receipt of the uh, EPSA. And that's, uh, so that's, uh, you, you need 250 uh, different images to get your 750, which is difficult enough, but I'm about halfway through. Okay. Um, sorry to rub this in, Tony. This is Spitsbergen. Uh, early one morning. I think this is about half five in the morning. It was quite overcast. Obviously, this, the sun doesn't set up there. Uh, but the the blues that have actually desaturated that slightly because the blues are just so intense, uh, and the um, the bergy bit is in the foreground, and obviously the glacier is in the background with the mountains speaking up through fairly overcast, dark, dank sky. Uh, it was quite chilly, but it's uh, uh, it, it, uh, with a wide angle lens and uh, lying on the, the floor of the rib, uh, which is actually extremely cold because there's no insulation between the floor of the rib and, and you lying on top of it. Uh, you don't lie there very long, uh, but the uh, um, wide angle lens has accentuated the, the angles on the, the ice in the foreground, and obviously you get reflections underwater and, and uh, with a refraction of the, the, uh, the berg underwater and of course naturally nine-tenths of that is below the surface. Okay. Uh, February last year we uh, were in California and did a day workshop with Kim Weston who is the son of Cole Weston, nephew of Brett Weston and grandson of Edward Weston, who was a contemporary and um, great friend of Ansel Adams. The two of them shot many times in this location, which is Point Lobos. Uh, we had uh, two weeks in, in um, California, five stroke six days in San Francisco, and then the rest of the time on Big Sur uh, uh, and Point Lobos. And West, Weston spent almost all his time, apart from a period in Mexico, shooting images within the, the Point Lobos area. Uh, it's a state park and it was based I think, on a lot of his images that the California decided to make it a state park. It, it's the most amazing trees. These are Monterey uh, cypresses, a, a form of pine. I believe they're the second oldest living thing in the world. The oldest are bristletone pines, which are found in the um, Sierra Nevada. Second uh, oldest are the, the Monterey pines, which are found up and down the coast uh, around um, this area. Uh, it's about 150 miles south of San Francisco, um, close to, to Monterey itself. Uh, the, uh, to the right of the image is Carmel, uh, just to give us some perspective. Um, this was an image that uh, Weston took a long time ago on a 5x4 camera. It was a, an eye-opening day because I must admit that I did not look at 
um, images with a, a proper landscape perspective. Uh, and it was very, very well worthwhile. We started, I think, about nine o'clock in the morning and finished about five, five thirty, maybe six o'clock in the, in the evening. And it was a very, very full day. We were both absolutely exhausted by it. Okay. Uh, with um, with her friends Alan and Judy Walker from Keswick Camber Club, um, actually we we met them in Spitsburg, and Alan and Judy and Alan were beside me in the rib when the the image was taken of the uh, iceberg against the glacier. This is uh, the Palou, which is an area in uh, eastern Washington State, um, about four or five hundred miles, as much four hundred miles from Seattle itself. It's an area of loose um, soil, windblown soil, very fertile. Those are wheat fields and corn fields in the, the foreground leading up to the grain silo in the background. The, I think it's the, um, I'm, I'm pleased with the, the black and white uh, on it. This is sunrise and sunset. We shot this twice at sunrise, which was 5.30 in the morning, and twice at sunset, which was about half nine at night. Uh, they were both very long days, but very worth it. Uh, the the light that, that kisses the edge of the, the hills uh, is really quite something and creates these marvellous contours. Okay. Um, much closer to home, the Folk and Transport Museum. If you look up the website and check when uh, the blacksmith is on site, um, he's a very uh, affable character, very easy to talk to. Uh, but Alan and Julie were over with us uh, um, and we were down there uh, and he set this up like three times. Uh, when he, get, he heats up the, uh, the metal, he's making wrought iron um, pokers and um, when he hits them, uh, the sparks fly out and it was a matter of trying to find a shutter speed which caught the sparks flying out uh, but at the same time allowed the, the image to be sharp. I tried it at 20th of a second, but I'm afraid I'm too old now and there's too, too much camera shake. Even leaning on the barrier, uh, this is a 30th of a second, but it's amazing how far the sparks actually go in a 30th of a second. Uh, and this, he hits about three, four times and then the sparks die down. But um, I really must have been terribly guilty now looking at this because he asked me to send him some images and I haven't done so yet. So I will do this. Uh, done where all these images have got a pedigree in salons at the moment uh, and uh, uh, that one has, has had its three and it's uh, as, as I say it's, this definitely is straight three okay um, the lovely holly up in the white room uh, up in the, um, the Conway Mill uh, it's um, taken with a 50 millimeter 1.4 at probably about f2 or f2.8 one of the two, there's a slightest bit, a little bit of depth of field in it, just to keep both eyes in focus. Uh, and uh, handheld, leaning against the wall uh, with 50 millimeters, you have to be back against the far wall. And then, then people talk to you about when you come home and discover the white bits in the back of your shirt, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, they, they do wash out eventually. Okay. Uh, this is Chanel. Um, she now is from Bristol. She's a mixed race and she has appeared a number of times now on BBC and ITV recently. Uh, she was involved in the, the demonstrations when uh, Colson's statue was removed uh, and she's heavily into Black Lives Matter. She's exceptionally heavily tattooed. Uh, she's a makeup artist as well as a, as a model and uh, her positioning of the hands I think is nearly perfect there. Uh, and the nails, unbelievable. Uh, and obviously Ross's chain mail works to, to, uh, to perfection there. Okay. Um, cheeky one to say the least. This is called Opposites Attract. It's, a, it's won a couple of, and it's one outing. It's got three acceptances and a circuit and the two medals. Uh, Connor on the right, Heather on the left. Uh, and uh, it's the, um, almost a peacock blue in the tutu, uh, coupled with the, the contrast in the hair. Uh, and uh, I think the expression, Connor's face is priceless. What, what have you got me into? Um, Heather has got a print of that, I believe. Uh, and she was, she said she was terribly, terribly grateful to me because um, her, her bottom was squeezed just the slightest wee bit. 
she felt it was too big in the original. Okay. Uh, this got uh, five acceptances in the Pentaprism super salon, super circuit of five Indian salons uh, yesterday morning, including two Fiat gold medals. This is uh, M. Teresa, a model from Milton Keynes. Um, clever girl, she has a doctorate in a uh, geology doctorate in the rocks of Mercury. Uh, so she's Dr. Emily Teresa. Uh, it's um, in the white wall in the, the studio, the white background. Um, the background is made up of a combination of a graffiti from Kilmainham Jail uh, in Dublin, together with um, rust from Grip Vicken in South Georgia, the South Atlantic, uh, blended together using um, both the techniques that Ross describes in his video and the one that Joan Blees has about they're actually very much the same. There's only very subtle variations in them. Uh, and I made certain that uh, the shadows were kept at the bottom so that the, it, it, she was based uh, and founded it on something. Uh, and I'm, I'm pleased with that, but it's now done its bit and it, uh, it's retired, certainly from salons. It probably won't be retired from uh, Nepa or something like that if, uh, if we enter this year. Okay. Uh, this is Nikki uh, from Mumbai. Uh, she also is an exceptionally clever individual. Uh, she used to work on the floor uh, of the Mumbai Stock Exchange and was very successful. Then became a Bollywood actress and a model and she's um, married to a Dutch man at the moment and lives in The Hague. But unfortunately, they haven't been home and haven't been together for 10 or 11 weeks. She's in Mumbai at the moment. And she was preparing for a wedding and he's stuck in, um, in Holland. And hopefully everything will work out. This was four uh, separate images, the arms uh, removed from, from uh, some of the uh, images and added to the other one. This is Durga. I said, could you do a sheave? And she says, no, I'm a Durga, uh, which is a, a, an eight-armed uh, Hindu goddess. I think Shiva's 10 or 12, one of the two. Um, the background is the, um, the smoke from a colour run down in the maze. It was a, the last one I, I photographed down the maze. Uh, and... Uh, that they, as I say, the, the background, which I understand was possibly red smoke, um, is now uh, uh, the background in that. Okay. Um, Connor, this, this, the, the original photograph was in the um, shot in Finnehy. Um, Connor with the goggles, uh, my beanie, and my longshoreman's uh, smock, the barber. Uh, and uh, I said, look miserable, uh, you're caught on a, a windswept cold island uh, and he looked at the, the part. The background is Elephant Island in South Georgia. The whitey spits are the area where Shackleton uh, left uh, the 19 men while he and Crean and Worsley and the two other guys, McCarthy and Camping Nish, uh, headed for South Georgia. Uh, they camped there for three months uh, and eventually Shackleton and the other guys came back for them. Obviously the, the snow's been added in, etc. And uh, uh, it, I think it gives an impression of the, the cold. Again, that's a, a strike three and it's out. Okay. I'm actually embarrassed by the next two. Um, they are attempts at um, composites uh, the background are bubbles on the undersurface of the large aquarium at um, Monterey. Uh, this is the um, aquarium that was used in Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. Spock swam with Gracie and George and Gracie, the, the two um, humpback whales in this, and the jellyfish are from the uh, the jellyfish tanks at uh, the aquarium. It is well worth a visit. Uh, um, Liam, I'm sorry to rub it on slightly, but you'll enjoy this when you, have, you finally get there. Uh, uh, this uh, got three acceptances in a, 
a salon in India and a medal, a bronze medal, and has since retired. But I, I, the more I look at it, the, the more I'm slightly embarrassed can I compare to um, what Gerald and, and, and Laurie, etc., produce. Uh, I'm so far behind when it comes to, to composites in this club, it's not true. And my final image called the Rising. Uh, again, jellyfish from the jellyfish tanks, bubbles and the undersurface from the, the big aquarium there. The, the glass in this aquarium is nine inches thick uh, because of the, the pressures involved. Uh, the, um, the tank is emptied uh, every three months and all the fish and uh, creatures living in the, the tank are uh, go back out to sea and then uh, the tank is filled again and, and with uh, uh, seawater and obviously the, the fish and the various other animals come in with it. Uh, and for the first three or four days, they are looking very, very carefully because some of the critters in the tank don't get on with other critters and have to be removed and, and sent out to sea again because they, they start to eat the rest of the, the uh, inhabitants. Uh, this was Ella again. A um, wee bit of um, liquify used in the dress to make it flow just a bit more. Called the rising and it got three acceptances and a gold medal. Uh, fave gold medal in the Pentagrism circuit, uh, which was announced yesterday. Okay, that makes up my 15. Um, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Bob. Bob, just a question before everybody else chips in. You've created all of these since lockdown started? Yes. Right. Just a bit of inspiration you know, for, <laughs> for a lot of us who are sitting around scratching our arses. It's, it's amazing when you get up at 7 o'clock in the morning and you're not disturbed by anyone until it's at 10.30 a.m. Yeah, I ain't getting up at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, we're... It's, uh, no, it's, from that point of view, it's good. Uh, we, we, one can concentrate and do things. Um, put a little bit of music on as long as it's not too loud and uh, you get carried away. That's a pretty amazing to see that. I mean, for someone who's known from primarily for, for sport, to see such a... a, a Adaptive uh, images. I, I think I see all sorts of problems in it, uh, and I'm sure other people see all, all sorts of problems as well. But it did what it had to do, and it got its three acceptances. Um, now it's out. I think I've got a hundred and twenty odd images. Um, so that's three sixty or whatever it is, and, and more actually. Um, there's another circuit coming up where uh, I'm trying to fill in with the ones that got two. Uh, acceptances or one acceptance in the effort to try and get them dead as well. Anyway, Bob, an exceptional array of uh, images, only to be expected from one Thank you. such as yourself. But I do like, I, I always think that when one can show pictures and put an appropriate story with them, it, it really does uh, make a presentation go that much better. So, uh, excellent, very much so. Thank you much. Let me just stop the recording here.